You may think you know what a gordito is, but I'm talking about do you know what authentic is with a good cornmeal masa and the onions and all the flavor that's blended so well with the potato? Come on, cause I ain't waiting and I ain't going up to the drive up window. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard on a glorious day it is, but I'm just going to warn you, we could get out of pocket here at any minute if the wind blows some of our stuff down out here, so just bear with us. We have got it MacGyverized today, but what are we talking about? Gorditos. Yep, you heard me. Now, some of y'all, the only Gordito y'all might have ever seen might have come from the Taco Bell. Y'all know how I like to go to a drive-up window and get me something and see what we can do with it, but folks... I've never seen a gordito from Taco Bell, so let's just take a quick pick at one and see what it sort of looks like. Now, I'm not going to give you the whole tour just yet, but that is it it's right like there. It's a taco wrapped yeah, in a... Yeah, it's a soft flour thick, tortilla, thick tortilla, but maybe a little thicker. Now, what we're talking about is the original gordito. I mean, them things is good and mm-mm. Speaking of gorditos, which means little chubby one or little fat one, <laughs> I have one right here with me today. The little gordito dog named the Big. And there's a mage, he ain't a gordito. And we have a new member that has joined us this week and she is sure gordito. That there is Sadie. We rescued her and she is fixing to make Shanna grandmother of about six or eight pups at any time. So let's talk about gorditos and what they were used for. They were so easy, sort of like a, a Mexican hot pocket that you could make and stuff with something and you could just eat it on the go. I mean, and these things are so delicious and have so much of the true authentic flavor. So let's get after it. Well, I need you to take a little stock pot and we're going to put three fourths a cup of water in there. And to that, we're going to add about three fourths cup of chicken broth. Just mix it all in there together and we just want it warm. And while that's warming, we're gonna start with about two to two and a half cups of what? Masa. We're gonna start with two and see if we have to add any of that to it. We're gonna add us some salt, which is exactly that much. And I know in this mixture that it already has maybe a little bacon powder in there, but you know me, the cowboy is gonna add a little more bacon powder cause he wants to see it pop just a little more. So about yonder much, and I want you to mix that with your hand just to get everything incorporated well. I'm gonna get that all back into the middle cause we're just gonna use our hands with this and just add a little at a time. I would say about so. And just take your hands and go to mixing it in there. Get some more, get her raked around there, go to mashing on it just a little. We wanna get it into where it's pretty soft yet got some moisture in there to it and a little bit pliable. Now you can see that's not sticking to the edge of the bowl, and it's, but look, it's got cracks in it. So it's a little bit dry, it is. I'm just trying to pick all this loose stuff up, and then we're gonna pat it back out here, and we're gonna add some more. That's what I'm after. Soft, pliable dough, still got a little moisture, because we can dry this out if we need it, but folks never start out with the two and a half cups or two and a fourth. Now to that, I just want you to mash down just a tad, make you a little well right there in the middle cause that's gonna come in handy here after a while. And due to the magic of we need plastic wrap and this is all we got today is a plastic bag because the cowboy ain't got no plastic wrap. So you've heard of recycling and using what you got. Hey, I'm liking it. I want you to mash that down and if you have to, if you've got plastic wrap you can cover, don't do it. Mash it down to where it seals that dough and tuck it under because we want to keep all that moisture in there. We don't want it to sweat and rise to the top and evaporate. So, guess what, Shin? Time to set it in a warm spot for about 45 minutes and we can take a nap. I lied to y'all, you can't take a nap. We got stuff to do because we have to make more of what goes in the dough and more of what's gonna be stuffed in there. Now, I need you to get you two medium-sized potatoes and you can skin them now or skin them later, but just put enough hot water to cover them, set them over on a burner, some sort, and get them cooked till they are fork tender. And then just pull them out of there, let them cool. Now, I need you to go ahead and take about four jalapenos 
stemmed and seeded and sliced and diced just like this. And we're going to chop an onion here in a minute. And I need you to cook about six pieces of bacon because we making our gorditos breakfast style and you didn't go to no drive up window. You don't. We done got the potato boiled up we did. It's right here in this bowl. See it? Mm -hmm. It is a tater. Now see how that skin just begins to roll off there so easy. But make sure, folks, that you have let this cool before you handle it very much or it'll burn the hair off of you, I promise. And then we're just going to sort of crumble with a fork or with your hand. I don't want it mashed. I want it a little bit chunky. So just get it to about right there and then let's just sort of quit because we're going to do some more goodness to it. Well, there is one white onion that is chopped. And he need to go in there first because it's going to take him longer to get softer. In that bacon grease, who oh, ain't that a lovely sound right there? And while y'all was thinking I wasn't doing nothing while I was chopping this onion, I also chopped me up two garlic cloves that are going to come into play here in a little bit. Them onions is about tender they are. So remember them diced up jalapenos we had? Let's just go ahead and dump them on in there because I need them to get tender just like them onions. The jalapenos and the onions are done, they are. This comes a time when you should add them two minced garlic cloves. We want to put them right in there to last. We have turned our heat down to low. We're going to let that garlic cook just for a second. And then, folks, this is when the magic starts to happen. Here comes the potato. And you can see he ain't got no seasoning on him at all. So we're going to use the mesquite because it's got a little ancho chili. But no, it is not hot and spicy. It is a blend of smoke and flavors that will hit your taste buds and make you go. I like to put a little cumin with mine as well. A little bit of cumin goes a long way. We ain't through yet. Remember that bacon that you thought was going to leave out? No, we are not. And we just want to stir this around to incorporate all the flavors of everything in there. And looky there. See that there? That's what I'm talking about. Is that little whale in there? Oh, yeah. You can use lard or you can use oil. Me, I like to use about two tablespoons of butter. Here we go. Just go to folding that over and get that butter all mashed back in there. And you can see that that stuff is still just as wet and moist as it's supposed to be. That butter get in there and things are going to be good. Get it here and roll it into any shape you want. Get you enough that is about the size of a medium-sized large golf ball, a little bit smaller than a baseball. And I just want you to roll it around in your hands. Coming next, I watched this lady make these out there at Silver City because I was looking over behind that bar in that little old tin shed, and she'd be rolling this dough and just rolling and rolling. Then I'd see her quit, and she'd take her thumb, and she'd mash it right there in the middle, and then she'd begin to make a bowl. We are going to take about that much of that, just pinch her together just like that right there and just go to rolling it back together to where what? that is going to be in the dough itself. You can see, and I want you to make you one more little bowl out of there. You got them back to that. Queso fresco. You can use Monterey Jack, any kind of cheese you want to go. Here we go again. Yep, looky there. We have got them all rolled up to where they're supposed to be. Got all that flavor and incorporated well. And you're thinking to yourself, we didn't use all that stuff. Hey, we got to have that stuff to make the stuff that goes inside the stuff. So, hey, it's going to be good. Yeah, I need you to get you some wax paper. And right now the wind ain't blowing, but put one right there. And I want you just to give it a little mash with your hand. Just keep mashing there till we can sort of get about a half inch thick. Make sure that you mash them edges as you go back around. And looky there, we're going to set him right there till we can get another one made right quick. Got our field skillet over here, the jumbo size, because we're going to cook these six to minutes, six to minutes, six to seven minutes on each side or five to seven. That way we know that they're not going to burn, but they're going to get fully cooked in the middle.
doggies, as my friend Jed Clampett might say. Ain't them a pretty sight? Now, I'm gonna hold this one while I tell you about what just happened, and you see me slice through there. Don't go plumb through. We just want it to open up like a pocket, and then we're gonna put some of that potatoes, jalapeno stuff in back in there, and ooh, crumble some of that cheese on there, some of that table crema, and then top it off with our special hot sauce. But hang on, folks, that special hot sauce will be coming to you soon. I'm just giving you a little hint. And the crispiness here, the cheese is melted. This. You think we should compare these before we even go any further, Shan? Sure, because I didn't even know what a burrito was. Okay. And I'm confused. Me too. Me too. Now, they got cheese and onion, and they got a corn tortilla inside a flour tortilla with some more onion, a little bit of meat down there. It's a and taco. It's more like a... Double taco. Double, double, double taco deal. I don't really understand, so... Let's, I don't, which I, no, I know which one I'm eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no comparison really. Whew. Mm. <clears throat> Hang on, big. But I don't have to <laughs> Whew. Load the wagon, get the firewood. That stuff right there is good to go. Brings back a lot of memories from, whoa, whoa, we like to forgot something. Now folks, I done picked them out some taters that ain't got nothing on them. Come here, Sadie. Come on, come on. There's my age, there's yours. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sadie, she is our new little woman here. She's gonna have us some grand puppies. And look who showed up right at the last, just in time for food. It is the Duker. Remember me telling you we made this a breakfast version, but folks, I could eat that any time of day. Now you could do this with ground pork, ground beef, chorizo, some stew meat, steak, whatever you want to fill them with. <clears throat> you can't go wrong here. And look, it's a two at a time deal. Maybe even put one in your pocket and tote three. This is what's happening. But I got a special email this last week, and I think we should share this with y'all, so bear with me just a minute, because I'm gonna have to find some spectacles. Now y'all remember at the end of every video, I always be telling you, y'all are family to us and you are. But folks, I wanna share with all of my family out there something that I think we need to do. I got this letter just the other day in the mail. It says, I'm writing you on behalf of my granddaughter, Ruthie Gregory. Ruthie has a bone marrow disease and it gives a name folks that I can't even pronounce. Very rare in children. Basically, she is to get a bone marrow plant and hopefully in the near future. And if it takes it, she may lift six or 10 more years. Mm. With today's technology, there is no known cure. But we hopeful, but we are hopeful and mama says God is still in the miracle business and that he is. We're hoping you could wear her shirt in one of your episodes and ask your viewers for prayers for Ruthie Maybe just hang it on the hanger in the background. Whatever you could do would be muchly appreciated. Now folks, this is what life is about to me. And that is helping those that need it. So I would ask you all, when you get down on them knees tonight, folks, be sure that you pray for Ruthie and you ask her for a miracle. You say, God, I need a miracle for this child. Children should not be sick. So folks, remember her in your prayers I thank you so much, sir, for sending that letter to me, and it has brought some tears to me and Shannon. So remember, this is what family does. Ruthie, we love you, sugar. We're going to lift you up in prayer, and we've got a million, one million six hundred thousand folks are going to pray right with us. So God bless you, sugar. As always, I thank all to tell you. The recipe and anything that we used in this video will be listed down there below where you can find it. But Today I tip my hat not only to our servicemen and women and all them veterans that are keeping this country safe and old glory flying over our camp, but Lord, I tip my hat to sweet little Ruthie and her family and her parents, Lord, and I just ask you to just take care of them. I just hope that you'll bless them in the days ahead, keep them safe. Thank y'all for stopping by camp today. These are so easy and so tasty, and I'll see you down the Gordito Trail.
Yep. People be saying, don't you ever feed Shannon? You always feed the dogs. This is, I didn't know what a gordito is, but I did not think this is what it was. So what do you think? It's good. It's really like. Good, that's it. Potato-y, but like, what was classic Mexican flavors mm -hmm. with the masa? Are you gonna give us a happy dance? Huh? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. They are good. And I do, I do not starve. Don't, don't worry. Thank y'all so much.